There's no point in talking about Linux if I can't edit my videos and record it Linux. I would say the Windows counterpart would be Sony Vegas Pro, and that's saying a lot. Kaden Live. I, 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 I. George Bush doesn't care about black people. Yeah, so one day, a long, long, long time ago, you know, Jesus and his homies, they were just kind of walking around chilling and doing their whole preaching thing about peace and love and unity and fellowship for their fellow humans and, and getting along and working together with absolutely no reference whatsoever, ever, 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 anywhere at any time of fire and brimstone and hell and sin and death and burning and choking and screaming and torture from a ruthless toddler god or anything like that, with the exception of one mistranslation in Matthew from the original Hebrew that basically it says sin and death will Pass into Gehenna. Gehenna was a biblical fire, you know, which was a garbage dump set for the whole fire and brimstone thing comes from anyway. No people or anyone are gonna be thrown into any eternal hellfire pit or whatever the fuck. That was a total mistranslation by the church I mean, business of Jesus Christ. And, yeah, anyway. Um, so back to the story. Yeah, Jesus and his homies, they were just chilling and, you know, doing the whole love your neighbor and, you know, make love, not war, and, you know, just, you know, everybody get around the campfire and sing Kumbaya and whatever. And, you know, <clears throat> then, as they were, you know, just kind of chilling and everyone's gathered around and they were roasting their marshmallows and whatever and, you know, being all happy and stuff, um, up pulls up one of the, uh, the, the, the corporate whore banking elite of the day, um, you know, big, rich, Pharisee dude who, um, you know, just like the modern-day corporate geopolitical Pharisees that, that we have now who, you know, um, they, they sell fear, um, you know, to, to maximize prophets and you know they're like yo man just you gotta believe in like the social title of christ you know i mean you know for, forget about the fact that, that, that jesus said um all the works that i've done you also shall do and, and greater still and, and you know just again totally forget about the fact that he's like the same father that's that's within me is also within you as, as he is god you also were gods and you know all the uplifting stuff yeah let's forget about that i just kind of twist it around and go yo man if you hold your dick with the wrong hand while you piss you're gonna burn in hell so like give us all your money and shit yeah you know one of those dudes pharisees haven't really changed much since back then they're still around, they're still corporate whores. So anyway, you know, this corporate whore camel dude freaking pulls up and he's like, Yo, Jesus, what up? Jesus like, how's it hanging, my rich ignorant brother? And he's like, oh, not bad, business is good, you know, you know. Went out, killed a few people, made a profit, you know, whatever, it's all good. I got a question for you, Jesus. And Jesus like, yeah, what's, what's up, man, what's your question? And he's like, you know, I've heard a lot about this kingdom of heaven stuff you've been talking about, man, so like, you know, how can a big, rich, pimp fly motherfucker like me riding on this big, expensive camel, dragging my, my pouches of gold and silver and all that? How can someone with, with my mad daddy pimp mainstream status, how can a super fly motherfucker like me, how can I obtain the kingdom of heaven? Obviously, I can't purchase it. 
I done tried, it hasn't worked too well. So, seeing as you seem to be on the down low, up on the, uh, up in the inn with the almighty over there, I was just kind of curious, um, you know, what's, what, what, what's your secret, man? How can, you know, how, how can someone like me get in where you are? Look at you, you got no money, you're roaming around in the desert, yet, you know, you're raising people from the dead and turning water into wine and, and, and walking on the water and all this cool shit. So, you know, like, like, how might I be pimping super fly like you? How, how might, how might I get up with these magical Jedi force powers you got going here, man? Jesus kind of looks at him and just chuckles, and seeing as Jesus was the master of sarcasm, among other things, Jesus is like, you know what? A rich man ain't gonna obtain the kingdom of heaven any more than a camel, that big-ass camel you're sitting on there, is gonna be able to pass through the eye of a needle. And rich dude's like, oh, well, shit. Um, well, that kind of sucks. But you know what? That's okay that it sucks. That's all right, because you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna twist that around, you know, when we make you into a religion, you know, in about 2,000 years from now, it's okay, we're gonna give you lots of PR, we're gonna just kind of reposition a few things when we form this thing that's gonna be called the canon of the Bible, you know, there's gonna be about a hundred books or so that anything that's preaching too much about peace and love and light and joy, you know, we're just gonna exclude that. Um, we're gonna keep a little bit of it in there, you know, and just, just a little, and we're gonna make a few editations, and, you know, we're gonna get, we're gonna give people that false hope, and, you know, we're gonna, anything that's truly in, inspiring and liberating and empowering and brings you closer to God, you know, keep that out of the canon of the Bible. We're just going to kind of dismiss that. It's too controversial and it interferes with our profit margins. And so um, and we're going to put that all together in a nice little sales package, a little upsell package. And we're going to be like, hey, guess what? If you're rich, you're going to hell. So you got to give all your money to the church to purify all that. And not only are we going to make it so churches don't have to pay any taxes, but we'll give you an income tax deduction when you donate to the church. Oh, yeah. We'll make it so you don't got to pay the taxes either when you give us all your money. So, yeah, you kind of see where this is going. Jesus is a master of sarcasm. It's like when, you know, when he walked up and he's like, Yo, man, you know, you can't remove the speck from your brother's eye when you have this big-ass plank sticking out of yours. Big-ass piece of wood blocking your view, but you're going to try to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Okay, how does that work again? So, yeah, um, Jesus is a master of sarcasm, but they kind of take stuff literally, because... Shakespeare's sarcasm, and most people don't understand that, so, you know, Jesus is, is among the great sarcastic masters. So, yeah, I guess the point is, it's just like the little, the little, uh, graphical screen says here, I'm a Christian, not a hypocrite Christian, since all my fellow Christians out there actually read that Bible, and for what it is, you know, and for all the people that aren't Christians out there that have equally, you know, um, paid attention not to the Bible, but to, you know, what people have just said of it. There's one thing I like to say about the Bible, and that is, do not judge the book by the asshole speaking of half of the pole bin. You know? Read it with your own eyes, your own heart, your own mind. Trust your inner knowing, and quit taking shit out of context, alright? You know, people are just like, oh, well, the Old Testament talks about stoning people and killing people and, and this and that and da-da-da-da-da. It's like, look, the Bible is a progression of past to present to future which notates mistakes made and corrections issued and moving forward. But seeing as people take it all at once as the literal, practically applicable, you know, dummies book in the now, that's how mistakes keep getting repeated. So don't be a dumbass and wake up. And love and light and God bless you.